Hey everyone, welcome back to another Wednesday evening live stream, the Shower Door Professionals. We do this every week on Wednesday. So uh, glad that you could join us. Um, if you're watching on Facebook, you can just stay there and watch, you know, or you can click on the link in the page. Come on in. Or you can go to showerdoorprofessionals.com and you'll easily find a link to route you right here into the call so that you can join us. And uh, if you're listening to this podcast sometime in the future, um, go ahead and give us a little thumbs up, you know, write a review. That'll, that'll help. Um, you can find us anywhere you listen to podcasts. Sure, and I'm gonna mute Adrian. Hey, uh, there's Christina. Christina, what's going on? We missed you last week, man. We noticed when you're not here. Oh man, I'm just too loud. Well, thanks. Um, <laughs> hi, uh, I'm just parking. I almost made it home on time. Um, I have my little sticky notes, little car <laughs> thing. Hi, friends. I'm Christina. I uh, am a shower door professional and um, I have an addiction to shower doors. And um, <laughs> hi, hi, Christina. Hi. Welcome. Thanks. You're not alone. Um, thank you. Sorry I missed you guys. Uh, last week I was out of town and the week before we were uh, on a plane coming back from Glass Build. So, a couple, lots of updates. There's tons of stuff going on and it's really exciting. Um, and I haven't had a chance to blast anything out or tell anybody about stuff but um we did a glass cast with katie devlin uh with the nga so that'll be coming out i don't have a date on that yet um but as soon as i do you guys will hear about it um we did our exec forum blast about the co-op we had like a little five minute spot which was great um and a lot of good interest in that and then danny was very generous to uh let us do a, a spiel in the shower door professionals breakout session um as well which was i think also a part of the exec forum one thing i did want two things i wanted to announce if you weren't in the glazing executives forum at glass build or didn't go to glass build my glass class is going to be, it is now free for NGA members. So if you did not know that, now you know that. My glass class is free for NGA members. So go to my glass class. I believe there are some shower door, there's a shower door series coming out in mid-October. I guess it's already mid-October. So it's coming out in the next couple of weeks. If it hasn't already, I have not checked. Um, we had a great event at Glass Build. It was so awesome. Um, a lot of people met in person for the first time. It was like a family reunion. It was crazy. Um, two hours was not enough time for an event. Um, we want to do maybe more events, mm -hmm. uh, maybe right. a longer event at Glass Build or no. other events throughout the year, maybe no. sponsored events. Things. I hear We've rumors. Got... I hear rumors. Yeah. So um, <laughs> anyway, we... And we already have a vendor sponsor for next year's event. I'm not going to say anything yet because it's a year out, but we already have a vendor sponsor for next year. So vendors are really excited and I'm really excited. They're um, fighting. Also, they're fighting for they're, the position. They're fighting for the position. And Chris, I haven't told you this yet. I talked to the national sales rep for shower guard yesterday he came into our showroom and we were chatting and so he's wanting to like chat and maybe do like a lunch and learn or like a something on the call um Ooh. i also have a meeting this is so crazy you guys um with the new ceo mark adamson the new ceo of old castle wow so that's pretty cool crazy um right. he just happens to be a friend of a friend of a friend who reached out to me and was just like do you want a meeting with him and I was like of course I want a meeting with him don't know what I'm gonna say but if you guys have things about old castle that you think I should bring up I would love to tactfully bring up positive things about old castle to this man so um yeah that'd be great and then um 
who last cast? Oh, um, if you're a co-op member already, um, there is a separate Facebook group. This is not to mimic anything that's happening here. This is not to other anybody. That is simply a forum where we can put committees together to help with all of the things related to the co-op. Mm -hmm. So if you are a part of the co-op, please, if you have not already, look for an invite in your email, look for an invite on your profile. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you think you should be a part of the co-op, but you're not, or haven't heard anything, or are confused about what I'm saying, please reach out to me. I would love to shed some light. And then if you filled out the form to become a member and you haven't heard from me, feel free to check in and reach out, make sure I got it. But also just know that we are, we are slowly working on this. <clears throat> working One through thing it. at a time. We're working through it. Did I it. miss anything, Chris? I don't think so. I think you did great. Um, yeah. You know, that other Facebook group is just kind of a separate space. So we don't have to like do all of our talking about the co-op. Some people here might not be interested, you know, in hearing what we're talking about with there. So, you know, it's a place where we can get all specific and stuff, you know? So thanks for doing that, Christine. I appreciate all the work that you're doing. I, mean, I don't know how we would do this without you. So uh, keep up the great thanks. work. Thanks. Uh, hey, thanks for the idea. It's exciting. My pleasure. Awesome. Um, I see Billy Brett. I can't go on without talking to Billy Brett. What's going on, man? I don't want to single you out or anything if you want to just hang back. But um, I do just want to uh, say hi, man. Say say how glad I am to see you. Yeah, we um, we had a few minutes. Actually, Matt's family's over at my house right now having dinner. We've been having a lot of, uh, a lot of group dinners lately um, with everything that's going on here. So um, <clears throat> we had a few minutes and just wanted to say how much we appreciate everybody um obviously it's been hard to get back to everyone uh with everything that's been going on it's kind of been a a mess and a, and a whirlwind and still you know still a lot of things up in the air but uh we appreciate everybody here and them to you know a lot of people have reached out to us directly um and we really appreciate that we don't we're still in a, a space where we don't really know what help looks like a lot of the time but um we want to take a few minutes and at least you know, show our faces because uh, we, we've been kind of, you know, just trying to go day to day and figure out what the next step is and what we're doing. So, uh, but we really are appreciative of uh, everything that everybody's done and um, what, hopefully what people will continue to do because this is, this is something that's going to live for quite a while with us. So, yeah. So I just wanted to, just wanted to show our faces and say thanks for a few minutes. So. Awesome, man. Well, I appreciate that, Billy. And, uh, yeah, man. Um, love you, man. It's like, uh, sorry that you're going through this right now. Uh, try not to like, you know, reach out a whole bunch because I know that you got a lot of people doing that and you've got a lot on your plate, but I know, you know, that we're all thinking about you and praying for you and we're in your corner, man, you know? Um, and don't. so thanks for being here. And no, I think I might have lost him, but um, yeah, I think he was uh, when I spoke to him a couple of days ago. I think they were setting up the Starlink because um, I talked to him a couple of times, and this cell phone coverage was mm. spotty to say the least. So um, I think he was trying to set up Starlink. So, and and I don't know if anybody's spoken to Billy, um, but obviously you've seen the pictures; everything's gone. So he's um, looking at some new space. And uh, I don't want to share too many details. Obviously, mm -hmm. if he if he doesn't if he wants to share them, it's not secret. It's just don't want right. to take anybody's uh, thunder away. So right. <clears throat> I know he's actively working trying to get that business going again. Imagine not only your er, everything gone, the building gone, mm -hmm. the streets gone. Yeah, uh, I think I think a couple of trucks are okay. I think the employees took the trucks home, so I think he's okay there. He's having to reconstruct customers and shower doors and um and then then you got to get to them and you got to get to their house you know yeah brutal yeah really thanks everybody here for for showing your support for for billy brett you know and his uh 
his people out there in Asheville, man. It's like, uh, it's really cool to be part of a big family like this, kind of like Christina was saying earlier, you know, it's like we get together, it's like a family reunion. It's like meeting family that you never met in person. And uh, it's cool. I'm glad that we, we have this, you know, it means a lot to me and, um, and a lot of others too. So. Yep. We had one of our employees ran up a bunch of chainsaws last week because we asked them what they want, you know, cause it changes. You don't know if they got 7 million pallets of water or what they have. So um, they said they were looking for chainsaws and chains and oil cause they could cut trees for a for hundred years. Yeah, I understand they needed some, like, big chainsaws, not just, like, little chainsaws, right? Mm -hmm. They need lots of stuff. But it's, you know, big they're, trees. they're fighting. Yeah. Yep. It's just something that, it's just something that it could happen to any of us out of nowhere. I mean, being from Florida, we go to the mountains to get away from the hurricanes, right? Whoever thought that it would cause that kind of damage there. It's it's mind-boggling what he went through I'm yeah still they're, looking at they're how far from the coast they're like hundreds of miles from the coast aren't they yeah yeah well it went straight north when it hit the florida panhandle and just went straight north and it dumped so much rain in advance of the wind that if you've ever been to his place his place sat about i don't know seven feet above that swananoa river that river crested at 27 feet so, I mean, everything in that whole valley where he is was submerged and his not only submerged, but completely washed away. He told me the other day, he found his desk up near the Biltmore Estates, which is, I don't know, mile and a half up the road. It was a long ways away. But just think about it. It, it could happen to any of us. I mean, you guys in California could have an earthquake overnight and not, and not even realize it. And all of a sudden, boom, all the years you've been working and growing, it, it could just go, you know, any kind of a natural disaster. Yeah. That's just right. So bad, so bad for him. And then he's got to try and rely on an insurance company to come through with a check. And you've heard all the controversy with FEMA going on. Uh, it's not a good scenario. No. And, and I don't know about you guys, but I never, ever rely on the government to come through. I just don't. No. Uh, they're not good stewards of money. I don't like them holding my money or spending my money. Just don't. I'll do a much better job myself. Here, here. And this yeah. guy's got to depend on his whole, his whole career on if they come through with that. And even if they do, there's a limit on how much you're going to get. It's certainly not what the value of that business was. It's really no, sad. No, and then you've got to you know, you know, thankfully the building I think had been in the, the family for a long, long time. And I don't think there was a loan on it. I, not, no, But imagine your building's gone in your land. You can't build on that. You can't no. build on it and you can't sell it. <laughs> You've well, got a piece of land that you can't really do much with. It, it, that may not be true, Greg. Some developer may come in and fill that whole area and put big retaining wall up and put some kind of apartments along the river. But it's got to be a multi-million dollar, billion dollar project, probably. Uh, I don't know if yeah. that'll ever come to fruition in his lifetime. So, right. yeah, it's sad because he's got a property adjacent to that building also. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's not going to build there and nobody's going to insure it. And I think they had a minimum if somebody rebuilt it was, I think he was telling me, eight or nine feet up just to get started. I mean, that's yeah. just... I don't know. It's got a long road ahead of him, but we're going to try and pitch in wherever we can. And uh, I know a lot, a lot of people on this group have donated. And on behalf of Billy, thank you, thank you. Uh, yeah, and if you'd like to contribute and you haven't, there's there's a post that's pinned to the top of the Facebook group. Yeah, you can you can click on that to a GoFundMe page and uh, pitch in a few bucks. You know. And I give Billy a report. I've got an Excel spreadsheet of every piece of donation, whether it was a private check that was mailed to me, came through Venmo, or on GoFundMe. So he's got a report from every single penny that comes in. And when he's ready for it, I'll wire it to him or, you know, overnight it to him. But I want to make sure it's safe in his hands. 
Awesome. Um, <clears throat> All right, Billy just texted me. He says, tell everyone we're sorry the service couldn't handle the Zoom call. So uh, yeah. He just wanted to get his message out there to everybody that they're alive and doing well. And, you know, anybody that can help can help. There's going to be a point where I'll probably put a call out for when he's ready. Um, tools, caulking, anything in glazing. Uh, you know, if you have old tools, saws, drills, he didn't doesn't have any of that. We've yeah, got people right. too. So whenever, if the time comes, if it's needed, we've got people on trucks and we can bring tools and trucks and people to work and build and help and whatever we can do. Clear land, you know, anything. Oh, that's great, Christina. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, Rob said everybody was trying, he had a lot of hackers trying to get in. Yeah, I mean, I, I saw that one person look like an old lady that I'd never heard of. And I was like wondering if that might be, you know, um, some someone posing as a, um, that was kind of odd, you know, some some old woman. I um, think that might have been the, the person who hacked it. Yeah, there were about four people who uh, came into the room, but I was able to get three of them out. That one slipped by me. That's crazy. What do they get out of that? Uh, yeah, right. So, and Bill, you know, we're on this side. We're just on the other side of the mountains from Billy. So yeah. he had his nice Tennessee Volunteers background on. So he's, he's, uh, I'm sure he's thinking about Saturday's game. So that's good too. A good who diversion. They, who are they playing Saturday? Alabama. Again? Uh, yep. At home. At home. Yep. Like two years ago. The 101,000 screaming fans. Yeah, that was a big game two years ago. <laughs> yes, it was. I remember Glass Build was the week after that. You guys were still talking about it. Yep. He's a big ball fan. There are a bunch of them in in uh, Western North Carolina. So. Yes. Uh, I saw the pictures that Lana posted from uh, Top Golf, and was that was that Brian to the far left with the beard? In that picture, Brian made it to the show. Yeah. Yep. Yes. You did make it, huh? That's great. You missed it. You yeah. missed a great time, Bill. You missed a I really know. good time. I it looked it too. I heard from our guys in uh, Oklahoma and, and Michigan that made it there. I think they met quite a few of you. Uh, they had a really good time. They appreciate they appreciated the welcomeness. Mm -hmm. Everyone's just so nice in this group, and so. Uh, positive and willing to help and wanting to share and wanting to learn and grow. And it's just like the coolest group of all time. So really awesome. Glass build was a whirlwind and it was so awesome. Did you get any new members to join? Did you run into anybody new that you hadn't met that are going to join us here? Yeah, I think so. Um, in truth, I haven't had a ton of time, um, to follow up with new members. We had a lot of momentum going at Glassfield. Um, we have had some, some unfortunate events happen in our business, not nothing near what Billy is going through, but um, we have some, some hospitalization and things like that. So um, haven't had a lot of time to follow up on that. Um, but please, if you are interested in the co-op, reach out to me, reach out to Chris, um, Lana, Shannon, Rob, um, go to showerdoorprofessionals.com, fill out the survey, anything like that. Um, we will be reaching out and let you know more information. So Christina, I, I put it in this chat here, but I did receive the email about that page, but there was no link to join that page. So is the page up and operational yet? That Facebook page that you created? Oh yeah, that is that is up. Okay, so where do you join? Um, I think if you just click on the link. Well, there there wasn't a link in the email. Oh, there wasn't. No. One hmm, second. Let me see. I think mine had a link. If it did, I missed it. Or if you could resend it. Okay. 
Can you hear me? By the yes. way, I think my video is frozen. No. no. Yeah, you, we did lose you for a little bit. There you are. Okay. You're yes, I will. <laughs> I'll resend that. Give me just one minute. Awesome. Thanks. Cool. What else is going on out there? So how know. was how was Dallas? Was it was it a good place for the event, or do you think they're going to go back to Vegas in two years? I thought Vegas, I thought Dallas was great, but I I don't think we're going back. I don't. I understand they're going to tear that place down. Yes, and rebuild it. Is that right? When, That's what I, I don't think. So in two years, it may not be there. Is what you're saying? No, well, it's not going to be there. Okay. So they. May, I didn't see yeah. anything. I didn't see anything earth shattering at the show. Um, I didn't come. Away, usually, I come away with. We came away with some a couple small things, but nothing. Uh, I was hoping for something more. Uh, if you separate the show into two things, one is something new that you're looking for, or a supplier of this, or a problem with that, that you're trying to solve. That was that was okay. But again, it was basically <clears throat> all the people on this group and past acquaintances. I think I ran into all of them, um, except you and Keith, Bill. <laughs> and, yeah. and I know you guys were busy. But um, you, you know, saw Bryce. You saw Bryce. Uh, you saw Bryce. Yeah, chatted with him, of course. So there was a you know, it was great to see everybody. Really, is what it came to. We had dinner with several people here, and um, just a just a great a great yeah. event. Good. Did Max join you guys? Did Max Perlstein come over to join you? He didn't oh. come to the Top Golf event, but he um, we spoke with him during the Glazing Executives Forum and ran into him a few times on the floor as well. So he um, he's super uh, helpful. He wanted to look through his um, repertoire of blog posts and things and see what he could give to the co-op. Um, he was really um generous with his Good. information as well so that was lovely and the nga we met with um jennifer and michelle with the nga and michelle's job is to connect different groups similar to ours or like bema from the past with um the nga and collaborate so we she talked to us about that she voiced some um, genuine concerns about like legal considerations with endorsing vendors if something were to go wrong or something like that, which we have, thankfully, I believe we have covered with the attorney we're working with because it's a co-op specific attorney. Um, and they're really excited about it, really excited to help. Um, I was pleasantly surprised by CRL's new hinge. And pleasantly surprised by their new engineer. So CRL's doing some stuff that I thought was interesting. Yeah, so I hear it, rumors that that CRL is kind of stepping up their game. That they realize they're realizing that they need to uh, get busy. Um, so I think that they're we might be seeing more like them being on their best behavior you know here in, you know. that's a good that's a good point you guys i gareth who used to work for bola is their rep now and he's called on us probably three times and there used to be a rep for crl in the southeast i think his name was mark something he was very energetic ball of fire type of guy you know glad to see a kind of old school sales and when he left they never replaced him so we didn't have a rep for years and now all of a sudden three visits and here's the new hinges and here's the new this and we can get somebody to, oh, the new Fallbrook, we can get you a quote on that. Let's, why don't you send me, oh, we'll get you a sample. Oh, so definitely an attitude change at CRL. You're absolutely right. That's a wake up call. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Christina, if you're meeting with the head of Old Castle, I believe Old Castle bought CR Lawrence, so he may have some input onto what they're doing. Yeah, I think my understanding and the, the reason I'm connected with him is my husband's former boss used to work with him at Formica and I think somewhere else as well. Um, and they've like 
worked together at multiple places, followed each other, traveled the world, all that good stuff. And um, anyway, yeah, he's not familiar with the glass industry. And I was telling my husband's boss that uh, about the co-op and what our goals are. He said, well, do you know OBE? Do you buy from OBE? And I was like, yes, we definitely buy from OBE. <laughs> And he said, well, my friend Mark is the new CEO if you want to talk to him. I was like, what? That's crazy. Of course, like, of course, I would love to talk to Mark. But what, like, why would Mark want to talk to a little shower door company? And um, he said that Mark is the kind of guy who really wants to know his customers. He wants to know. Um, he's very strategic. He wants to understand the industry. So if there's anything... Um, I'm going to do as much research as I possibly can. And I might have some questions for some people. Um, so I can go into that meeting educated and ask some educated questions, but yeah. Good. If there's anything I should bring up, let me know. Good point. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I would I'd have them ask why their software won't allow us to use that software, even with proprietary or other hardware. They could make the defaults, uh, I don't know the right term, maybe Rob Gomez would do it, but not so much a default to their hardware, but uh, adjustable or generic, where you can go in and change your tolerances and your deductions. So if you wanted to put a door and panel in without a sweep or without a vertical gasket, and you want less clearance between the doors, they would lay, let you modify it mm -hmm. and still you know, go through this, uh, all the glass I, suppliers. I think you can do that. Uh, you can yeah. change your, your default adjustment. Mm -mm. Uh, mm -mm. Well, you there know, was, you, can, you have, you have to get permission through smart build who goes through CRL to give you that permission. You can, you can create your own cutouts and put them in a library. But as far as, um, easily what Bill's talking about is exactly right. Being able to use somebody else's hardware or your own cutouts, which you could do on e showers, which is on the FHC side now. But and I'm sure part of their defense is going to be well, it's a legal liability, blah 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 blah. But hey, I'm all for if they want if they want to say, hey, the minute you customize this stuff, you're on your own. This is you're in you're you know you're a experimental pilot like in the flying world. So it, it, this is it would absolutely. It, you, we know why they don't because it's they they're afraid that it opens up other hardware sales. It has nothing to do with legal liability and safety. So I, that's a great question, Bill. And it's to their benefit, charged for the software. You know, you know it doesn't because what they're we're using that statement, then what they're really doing is saying they are liable if something happens that's within their tolerance. And you know darn well they don't want to be liable for that. Exactly. Yep. So, yeah. so that's a great question. And that is and that's part of that old mentality of and there is a new mentality at CRL. So I'd be interested to hear that. Um Yeah. And if they're looking to really make a a, a, a splash. That'd be one thing to say that they're customer friendly and they would do that. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm sure SmartBill would well, be thrilled because they'll have more customers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, I just think strategically, though, there is absolutely no reason for them to do that because they are hanging on by a thread with that software and with their specific colors. That is the only thing going for CRL right this second because FHC is on their butts. Um, everyone's on their butts with software, especially. And so having that proprietary hardware deal is that that's all they've got going for them. I just don't see why they would ever open that up. That would be a very, I want it. I, I selfishly want it, but strategically that is not a good idea for them. I, I would disagree simply because I don't buy more CRL hardware because I use Smart Glazer. It has this zero impact on my CRL purchases. Zero. Zero. Yeah. And rightfully so. You know, we've got D3 and we do a lot of glass for outside vendors that use CRL, CRL hardware. Uh, but in Billy's case, for instance, when he was ordering glass, if he went to put in a system with certain out of squares, the system won't let him put it in and they won't the fabricator won't make the glass because it's a little outside of their tolerance. Mm -hmm. So if he goes to use other hardware that doesn't fit inside their tolerance, the system won't let them do it. Right. 
Yeah, that's a great question. Because it doesn't, okay. I don't. You know, uh, Christina, if you get in so deep, then have him give him either Greg or my number and say, hey, here's are some other guys that do shower doors, but also do fabrication. So they'll have a different angle of it. And if the guy would be interested in listening to the other side of it, be more than happy to talk to him. Yeah. And it's not Although, like I don't find things. We, we spend, we're not huge like Bill, but we'll spend over 300000 with CRL this year. So, you know, it's worth at least a conversation. You know, it's not like I don't buy anything and I'm going to lecture the guy. Um, right. And I'm the, I'm the same way. Greg. I, they're not my primary by any stretch of imagination, but right. still a significant number. Mm -hmm. Anyhow, that was yeah. a good topic. That was a good topic. But I did feel, I think these co corporate buyouts, they, they keep failing to learn the lesson. They're, they're Wall Street geniuses, they're money geniuses, but they're not business, real hard scrabble businesses. And every time a company gets bought, you know it's going downhill. You know, when was the last time a good, strong business that had been run by somebody strong got bought out and got better? Uh, it's, it's almost, I can't even think, I, maybe portals, if, if maybe, but Bola turned into portals, uh, uh, but you know. Twitter. <laughs> now, Bill. <laughs> but, you know, hard, you know, the RL got bought two or three times and went down here. Starbucks. Uh, oh. Starbucks? Is that privately held, isn't it? Yeah, it's... Cause there's a new CEO, and I think they're supposed to turn it around, but we'll see. Turn it around to what? Only only make $15 billion instead of fourteen. <laughs> Their sales are flat. I, is I thought the HMI, the culture at the HMI booth seemed really helpful this year. Um, CRL booth seemed very much in tune and wanting to listen, um, which I think is definitely, I think, I think these guys are having market share, you know, taken away from them. And they're having well, to figure out, hey, we can't just put a five cent gasket in a hinge to save a $4 million. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I think they were hurting when Danny left and he went back over to FHC and they had so much reliance on Danny at, at mm -hmm. CRL. That's big shoes to fill, really mm -hmm. big. So I think a lot of their innovation took a, a halt. But if they're a good company, they'll come back. I mean, say they certainly yeah. have the financial backing to do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I just, I just think that software, if they, if they let other people put their stuff into the software, it's going to be, I, I think people will move to other hinges. I mean, I, Bill, I know I've had people ask me if they can buy your hinges and use smart glazer. And the answer is yes. Mm -hmm. Um, but it is, a, you have to tweak a couple things, which is not a big deal. Mm -hmm. Um, I haven't had to. I've but it able, is a deterrent. I've, I've been able to use Bill's hardware without changing anything. Um, it works. It works fine. I mean, the, the cutouts are a little big, you know. But um, but I never had any problem using the. So imagine the being so concerned that your product is inferior that if you open up your product, you open up your software to other products that you're going to lose. Yeah. Good point. <laughs> Great point. Well, you it's like, you, I mean, it's like you said, Greg, I mean, it's not like I've bought more CRL hardware because, you know, because using showers online, I mean, pretty much everybody's hardware is made to, to fit CRL's cutouts anyway, you know, so I mean, you can use showers online and order your hardware themselves, it's no problem, but it may be a little more convenient if you're ordering from like Old Castle, if they have glass, if they're your glass supplier, because you know they're all the same family, right? So you can get your glass and hardware and everything from the same person. Might be cheaper or whatever. But well, what's coming? What's coming is a software that will do all of that. Yeah. That's what's coming, mm -hmm. and they don't they don't see it. So they're thinking, well, FHC will have theirs, and that's FHC only, and CRL will have theirs. 
there's going to be somebody else that's going to come out of nowhere. Sure. And they're going to have the shower design software and they're going to show up at Glassfield one year. And there's going to be a mass exodus of people because they've been confined to that supplier's hardware. Yeah. I'm sure Rob's working. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm sure Rob's working on it right now. Right. Oh, yeah. Rob's probably it's already got it done. Science. He just used AI. Talk. Just have AI yeah. do it. <laughs> but I mean, you, you know, it's coming. And, and the, this, this silly notion that somehow this is 1980 or something that you can restrict people and somehow try to shoehorn them into, into the hardware. Um, you're just, you're just asking for it. You're going, somebody is going to, and instead of embracing it and then making yourself even stronger, you've decided to hold the narrow line and then we can keep them in our hardware and we'll force them to, to, to make it really hard for them to buy other hard. Okay. Somebody else is going to come along and fill that niche guaranteed. Yeah. Well, and that, that's a great strategy. Like that's a chess level strategy right there because, because if you, um, if they open it up, every other company creating that hardware now becomes almost obsolete because smart glazer and showers online um are so far ahead i mean they have 20 years on everybody of development and growth and tweaks and detail so mm -hmm. anyway that would yeah i'll bring it up for sure that's a great point and a great topic and i'm happy to bring that up I'm happy to just have the meeting. I'm just going to chat with the guy, but um, I'm not going to like try to bug him about stuff. Really. I'd like, like to keep an open line of communication and instead of never yeah. talk to the man again. So. Just the first meeting, right? Um, <laughs> yeah. let, uh, let me in that meeting, Christina. Let me in that meeting. <laughs> is, there, is, it a, is it a virtual meeting, a telephone call or in person? It's virtual. It's just a half hour virtual. on a Zoom call. Well, yeah. good luck. He lives in the Northeast, I believe, but he commutes to Dallas every few weeks. Interesting. So, thank you. Yeah. Hey, hey, do I see the glazier of the year in our group yeah. tonight? Yeah. I saw some guy carrying a trophy around Dallas. Hey. Oh, hey, the glazier <laughs> of the year. Out of nowhere. Hey, Brent. <laughs> You're on. Give it to me. <laughs> you got right your trophy on. there in here somewhere <laughs> they should have got you a belt i think <laughs> a belt would be better than a trophy. Belt buckle yeah exactly right what's going on how you been doing brandon what's going Good. on dude just working just working man just getting after it just like everyone else keeping the dream alive trying <laughs> trying to Trying to finish the house, you know, <laughs> all the little things. Yeah. So, Brandon, I've been meaning to ask you a question. Donna follows this couple that are, live in your area, uh, Dallin and Bella. And it's Dallin must have a brother or brother in law in the glass business because they did a shower door. So, I'm wondering if it's any part of your company. Mm. What What's the name of the guy who did the shower? Do you know the name of the guy? Um, yeah, I, I wish I did. It's okay. either a brother or a brother-in-law of that. He said, yeah, my brother-in-law did the shower door, and it looked really nice. Uh, okay. I can't, Lambert. His last name is Lambert. Yeah, I don't know him. All right. I, I haven't seen you in forever, and I said, next time I see you, I'll ask you. Phoenix is a small town. I mean, everybody knows each other there. Well, if you're in glazing in that town, I think it is small. <laughs> it's a lot right. smaller, right? Right. Yep. Have you have you heard from uh, Chance at all? Um. Yes, kind of. Is he doing all right? <laughs> he's doing all right. Um. Yeah, he's doing good. <laughs> we uh, so we're not partners anymore. Okay. So we split. So it's kind of it actually just got settled. So. He's uh he's keeping Austin as a GCS location and then everything else will be GCS over here. So Okay. Well, I hope it all works out. But it was it was all it was it was cordial. 
Good. It's Good. Better this way anyways. So. Well, I, I, after what happened with his daughter, I just, you know, yeah. didn't even know what was going to go on in his life. And I hadn't seen him. Right. So he's just kind of, he's doing his thing. I think he opened up a couple other companies, a building company and some other stuff in Austin and still doing the glass thing and just doing his own thing. So. Okay. And partnerships are tough. My dad was in a partnership in a business and they, um, they were really good friends and um, they had a parting of the ways and a nice guy. Um, and they were still friendly, but it wasn't the same. And they, but they both wanted to take their company in different directions. Right. And, um, and that's what happens. A lot. I'm not saying what happened in your case, not trying to assume anything, but it's very common that we get two partners. If they're, you know, forget the case where a guy doesn't want to work and the other guy does, but when you got two guys that are hardworking guys, they just have different visions sometimes. And it's, it's hard to reconcile that. Mm -hmm. It's good. Uh, it's good to learn from. It's a good learning experience. So, but do they always have to be so painful? <laughs> <laughs> this one actually was. It wasn't bad at all. Honestly, it was actually good. It was actually a a weight lifted. So, well, I'm glad that worked out. Good. Well, say hi to him for us if you if you do run into him. Yeah. At all, or maybe he'll log back on. I don't know. Right. Yeah. Definitely. So what else is new? I don't I don't know if you've been keeping in the loop with uh, Billy's situation in Asheville. Yeah, I talked to him. I was had a phone conversation with him yesterday, actually. Okay. And then I've been, uh, Chris... I've been talking to him since it happened. Good. Thank you. And then uh, Christina with her co-op and starting this thing into the co-op that she's been doing lots of work and putting that together. Yeah, we're, hey. we're working on getting Brandon oh. on the team um, with the co-op to help us with um, putting together uh, events. So like, you know, we we're talking about doing another event other than glass build. And Brandon is like, he's he's the man. He's connected. He knows people. He's he's got a lot of uh, of um, irons in the fire, you know, as you guys know. So we're trying to see if we can talk them into coming over and giving us a hand with like maybe heading up, you know, putting together an awesome event for our group that's kind of exclusively for us and um, away from, you know, from Glassville, maybe in the middle of the year. So, you know, we'll see. That's a good idea. I think um, I have a buddy in the closet business and they have what they call a closet summit. And uh, it's just, a, and it happens to be non-franchise. Um, That's kind of funny, you know, man, closets. And, <laughs> the closets come in, and then they, and, but they get together, this, and they have little meetings and stuff like that. So something similar to that. And it's not a huge group. It's not like there's 400 people. So um, sometimes I think you get lost at Glass Build, you know, and that's why I think the part of that Topkoff event was so special was it felt like, you know, a, a meeting in a good way of all of us. And um, so I think that's a great idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. cool. yeah, yeah Bill, didn't you come out of the closet business? I did. That's what I, I did. thought, man. That's where you started out, huh? Yeah. Man, look at you now. Yeah, You're long best thing I ever did. From the it was long funny. A lot, of, a lot of people ask me why, too. And I just remember doing those estimates. I could be there at a customer's house for an hour and they're trying to decide how many pair of shoes they have or, you know, <laughs> how, how, how many how many dresses and hats and all these little shelves. And I'm going, my God, I can sell one shower door in about 20 minutes. <laughs> yeah. Three times we the did. price and I'm out of there. We were in the closet business for a very short period of time. And the same thing, you'd go in and the closet was packed full of everything. Yeah. Yeah. And and she's like, well, I just want to get organized. And you really want to say, you need to throw away half the stuff in this room. Yeah. But you didn't you say, oh, yes, absolutely. But you're right. It would be a two-hour meeting. Yeah. And the we shower have... door is a 15-minute sales call. You tell me I have a partnership with Goodwill. <laughs> 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 but it's not a bad business. I know a couple people in it. No, and you could do well. I mean, when I did it, I was only doing the wire shelving. I was one of the first closet mate dealers in Massachusetts. And, um, you know, when we moved to Florida, my God, they were selling it for half the price of what we were selling for in Massachusetts. And mm -hmm. it, it just didn't make any sense at all. 
but yes, you know. and the golden age of shower doors is right now because as we talk, and I think who brought this up, Shannon brought this up last week about the Miami market and the Houston market, and yeah. Elbin jumped in a little bit, and and it was like, oh my goodness, it's it's going to get prices are going to go down and lead times are going to get shorter, and it, it's happened already mm -hmm. in a few cities. So enjoy it, boys. Well, one of the interesting things that's happened, I don't know if it's happening in your state, but the state of Florida is changing a lot of their licensing rules. Uh, and it's going to be interesting. You must be state certified now. Instead of just getting a county license, you have to have state certification. And a lot of guys don't know that. And it's going to be a, a, a real shit show in July when it changes. Maybe guys cannot get that enforce it. I mean, we have a state license in Arizona, but they don't they don't do a good job enforcing it. So, You're right. That's exactly. It's like a self enforce. You got to call it in on somebody else. I, I mean, I've called I've called in on people, and they're like, "Well, as long as they're not um, advertising that they're licensed, it's really they have to get caught in the act." I'm like, "What? Like that's back when I got my license, they used to set up stings in houses and stuff and try to catch people, and I don't think they really do that anymore. So, no, that I have the manpower or desire, and the courts throw them out. It's terrible. Yeah. They, Everybody blames everybody else. No, the state won't let us know. The government won't let us do this. And and then they're there to just, I mean, they're really enforcing to protect the homeowner from the contractor is really what it is. It's not, you know, so if you get a complaint, it's just, it's a nightmare. You just pretty much have to just bite your tongue and fix it and, and yeah. not get a nick on your license. So, yeah. So what we're doing is just doing uh, like advertorial segments to educate the homeowners on what to look for mm -hmm. give them the place to look up for a license right you know, a lot of a lot of these guys they're they're using a general contractor's license i know so they're basically starting their business because they can't get their own license and they pay somebody to use his license and that's legal i mean they're allowing it which blows my mind it defeats the whole purpose of getting a license and getting legit I see it out here. You got people that use other people's license and it actually says when you take the test that it's illegal to use someone else's license unless you're a qualifying party, but people right. still do it. They get away with it. And then you got glass vendors that are still, as long as you have an EIN number, you don't have to have a contractor's license. They'll just, they'll deliver glass to you. And it's just like, you guys are selling to unlicensed contractors and, and then we're trying to compete with them. Yeah. And, Unfortunately, we're in a commodity business and we, we compete with price a lot of times. Yep. Oh. Yep. So on our D3, we will not sell to somebody until I vet them myself that they're licensed. And yeah, I've lost quite a few. Yep. They go over to Miami and there's places you just pull up your truck and they'll, you can wait, they'll make it for you. <laughs> they'll put it in the <laughs> truck and you drive away. H HMI, HMI was selling to guys out here. They'd go to your house and drop it off at your house for you in their van. No kidding. Mm -hmm. Wow. So, yeah. and the sales rep would stop by. Oh, no, we don't sell to anybody else. They have a storefront. Yeah. <laughs> and then they're at the, then well, they're at the self storage facility an hour later. Yeah. Fact, so, so many people get unload glass down the street from our shop. You know, the truck would deliver to us. Then they would, they would meet them down the street and just unload glass right there on the side of the road. Yeah. COD. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Bring back a check. It's crazy. <laughs> Have you ever seen, you know, uh, that brings an uh, interesting story. You know how the big trucks are and the, all the lights of glass are stacked on a truck and they unstrap them or they tie them with ropes or whatever. Uh, there was a company that needed their glass really, really bad and a truck driver couldn't get there in time. They said, okay, we'll meet you off the side of the road. So they met him on the highway, but the truck driver pulled off onto the soft shoulder and didn't realize that oh, it had a, had a pitch to it. As soon as he untied the rope, he was underneath about 25 <laughs> oh, pounds no. of glass. Oh, yeah, no. he, did, he didn't die, but boy, he got severely hurt. Oh, and, no. and that's what happens when you try and deliver off a big truck and you're not in a good level area. Yeah, I think most people just take it for granted and don't pay attention. Exactly. Exactly. It's like, they'll, we get companies that'll try and get the D3, try, hey, we'll meet you there. So, no, we're not doing it. We're just not doing it. If we lose your business, sorry, but we don't want you to lose your life or get, you know, get crippled because we pulled over off the highway. Yeah. Yep. 
I don't know how we went down that rabbit hole. <laughs> that was interesting. Yeah. It was oh, on the licensing. licensing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm surprised how many states don't require a contractor's license. Texas doesn't. Colorado doesn't. Tennessee doesn't. So Tennessee many doesn't. states don't require it. At least like, at least the business portion should be required. Like that's not even required. Yeah. North Carolina didn't. When we built our showroom in North Carolina, there was a handyman company next door they did electrical heating air conditioning they did the drop ceiling tiled the vignettes and carpeted the floor and mm -hmm. painted they did everything and they didn't need any special licensing crazy mm -hmm. yeah um so going back to the Asheville stuff has anybody heard from um the guy with glazer nation is it matt day is that his name I read a post today that they still had no internet and no power. But I thought he was out of Georgia. I didn't think he was North Carolina. Georgia. Okay. I, I'm, I'm just not sure. I don't really know. But I know that they were affected because I saw a post about it, too. I just hadn't followed up. He I was, think he's it. He was there. Okay. Um, he was there. Yeah. Yeah. I saw him at Glass, I saw him at glass Build. Uh, talked to him. But... He also put up a post too saying that he would send glazers at cost to any place that needed repairs from the hurricane. Oh, that's cool. Very good. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what kind of help Billy needs because he, you know, he's got a couple of trucks he said they that left that were the employees to home that survived. So um, you know, I don't know if HMI is gonna flood him with glass and how he's gonna get them in or you know. Uh, there you uh, got a couple crews. Uh, we can help. They making, reached out to him. Yeah, they, they reached out to him. They said because they used to send a big truck just for him, but they were going to make special trips for him for uh, nice. old glass for him since he doesn't have like a big area right now. Yeah. Um, Greg, I'm sure he wouldn't mind this, but he did find a location last Friday. And uh, actually, Don and I might go up and help him get it all set up. It's not as big as he needs. He's going to have to get another location off site somewhere for the storefront, another commercial glass they do. But he'll be able to get a little showroom there and some offices and run the shower door thing from the one location. It's actually a really nice spot. Uh, nice. He was very, he was very lucky. It was a, a contractor that owned this building, and Billy's father had done work for him for years and. The guy reached out nice. and said, hey, I have this space. So beautiful. that's what he's got. So we're going to help him wherever we can. Uh, maybe build some displays for him, get him going, supply him any hardware he needs. Uh, and then we'll see how he needs. And he did get keys for the, they lost, the guy brought some trucks home and then lost the keys. And it, oh. I think he went back to the shop or something, put him in the desk. But he was able to get a locksmith, and now they got all the trucks running because uh, they got they got keys made. So that's a big head start. Yeah, it's amazing what'll stop you, right? You think, oh, we got the trucks. Oh crap, yeah. the keys were in the yeah, building. The keys, and they're even digital keys. You know, the expensive. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. one hundred fifty bucks just for a key, or two hundred fifty bucks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's exciting. Yeah, we'll get them started. I want to tell him bigger, better than ever. You know, his location wasn't the best for walk-in traffic. Just people knew he was there because they'd been there so long. But I think he'll get a lot of new business because it's up on the main highway, that Route 25, um, Hendersonville Road. So I, I think he's going to get a lot of um, a lot of drive-by and probably even walk-in traffic. But he'll certainly get some good exposure. Yeah, and it's hard. To, it's easier for us to just be sitting here kind of cushy on the outside and go, he's going to be better than ever, but you know, he's going to be stronger than ever. You know, he's going to be better. I mean, this is like, he's, it's a, yeah, he's not going to die. No, it's going to be hard. It's going to be really hard, but I think he's through the shock part of it now and he's got yep. his head on straight and he's, he's yep. doing what he's got to do. Yeah. Yeah, so anybody left on here that hasn't had an opportunity to pitch in, if they want to pitch in, it's it's there. I think everybody's name that I see on here has already done a, a very generous donation for them. 
But if there's a lot of guys that listen to this and don't come on the live stream, uh, he would certainly, certainly appreciate it. And it's hard for it to come out of his mouth. That's why I told him I'll be his mouthpiece, yeah. so to speak, because uh, nobody wants to, to say I need help, guys. But he does. He truly does. Right. Yeah. And um, you'll find uh, that link in the description if you're watching on YouTube or if you're uh, listening on podcast. Um, yes, yeah, go ahead and look in the description. You'll see a link to that um, GoFundMe page. It was devastating to see that wide shot that I think he put up last, which was like that whole strip, mm. that whole, you're like, it's all gone. Gone, wiped out. For uh, a few days, they couldn't get down there, but they had it roped off because there was a lot of human remains that had washed down the river uh, mm. that kind of settled there. So they had to kind of keep everybody away. Yeah, there's, they're still missing like 1,100 people right now. Yeah. yeah, sure and, and probably under a lot of that rubble. Mm -hmm. it, yeah. It's terrible. Disaster. Wow. wow. Yeah. He yeah. said as it dries out, you can you can actually smell it if you're there. It's getting, it's getting pretty bad. He said something about his house being in a position where right near a turn of a river or stream or something or on the hill and just you know, hundred yards the other direction could have got wiped out. So. Oh yeah, yeah. He's got monster trees there too. You know, it's just that whole area, is like yours, Beautiful country. Got trees yeah. everywhere. Uh, yeah, he was fortunate. You know, his he built the house a few years ago on his father's property, uh, and they were all okay. They, obviously, mm -hmm. they were out of power, and he was running on generator, so they got power back. Uh, internet has still been spotty, but he did get a Starlink. I don't know if he purchased it or if it was one of the ones that must donated to Asheville and they gave it out to different people. Usually they keep them at a community center or a church and people can go log on to it. But I think somehow he got hold of one for himself. Starlink's an amazing thing. It is. Mm -hmm. It is. I have one here at backup and it worked during both hurricanes. Both. I have one at, I have one at my cabin as a backup to the spotty internet out there. So Yeah. It really is phenomenal. I buy a cabin to get away from everyone and you want internet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's funny too. Very true. Very true. My wife, when we first got the internet, I'm like, the internet is so spotty. I can't work up here. We need to sell this place. This is not gonna work. <laughs> too much well, relaxation. That's how you get, that's how you get a Starlink. That's how right. you get a Starlink. I gotta write that down. Okay, we gotta sell this place. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Greg, your Florida place okay? Yes, it is. Yep. Good. Came through Good. fine. You built it high the, enough, though. So. Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, it's high enough. Good. Good. How about you guys, Joel? Did you guys have any damage at all where you were? No. No, it went north of us. You know, Fort Myers is two hours south of Tampa. It really hit up into Tampa. So I had three employees mm -hmm. there that got flooded uh, from Helene. One guy got an Airbnb right next to Tropicana Field, and the next day, Tropicana Field lost its roof, and he was in the house next to it. So he had to get oh evacu gosh. he had to get evacuated from there and find another one more inland. So he's dealing. He's back to work, but he's dealing with the insurance company at his house, which is in St. Pete in Clearwater Beach area, uh, which got severely flooded. Yeah. But everybody, no no injuries of people. Everybody's back to work. Did you guys, um, see that? you see that guy, Lieutenant Dan, that always stays in his little sailboat during all the hurricanes. No, I didn't see that. <laughs> he was right there, and it's like he's super popular on like social media. Um, and he's like a home, like I would assume he's like a homeless type guy. He has all kinds of um, run-ins with the law back in the day or something. But someone started a social media for him and everything, and like super popular but all the hurricanes like hit and he's right there just in his little sailboat tied off to the dock and like it's kind of interesting yeah oh shout out to steve nunn too so steve was on a task force that came into florida to help uh help people so oh. the tech the texas guys he was in touch with me also that they were coming into florida but he didn't come down in our area i think they were up in the panhandle right so hopefully you got some good fishing in then steve no, we actually worked around uh, Pasco County, around Tampa. Oh, you were in Pasco? Mm -hmm. Oh, all right. 
Yeah. So right. it's got, uh, I guess the extent of our, of our operations, we're just getting people out of flooded houses and stuff. So. Well, thank you for your help. Yeah, absolutely. All right, guys. Till next hey. week. All right. Thanks for showing up, everybody. We'll see you next Wednesday. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Good night. Good night.